So that's actually one of the main topics that we are heavily invested because, you know, to know why something doesn't work as you age, we have spent a lot of years trying to understand how does it normally work. You know, if you want to fix something, you have to know what is not working. So you need to understand their functioning. So something that we have learned with the years is that autophagy, as you say, malfunction with age. In most cases, as you point out, there is a decrease in autophagy activity, but sometimes what you lose is the ability to regulate it. So basically there are particular conditions that you need to activate autophagy a bit more to accommodate to an stress. And that's what is lost with aging. So you might still have some basal levels of cleaning, but you cannot do the extra mile. And that really depends on the cell type. So different cell types get autophagy affected at different times in life and also depends on the type of autophagy. So to follow with the chaperone mediated autophagy theme, in that case, we know that it's always a decrease of function and it's very universal. I mean, we have not only in different cells in the body, but going from mice to humans, we can see this decrease on CMA activity with age. So that's one of the reasons why we are particularly interested in that pathway, because intervention wise, I think it will be easier to tackle that pathway because it always changes in the same direction and is quite universal. Meanwhile, other forms of autophagy have uh, you know, different variations. It might be more at the regulatory level rather than the total activity. And we are still investigating some of these other mechanisms. But I think with CMA, with chaperone mediated autophagy, we are getting closer to understand why it doesn't work. So in the case of chaperone mediated autophagy, again, I mean, I'm doing something that we should never do in science that is generalizing, right? Always happen this way for exceptions, but you know, the common theme here is that the receptors, so I mentioned that you have your chaperone, the chaperone identified the protein that needs to be degraded and it bring it to the lysosomes. And in the lysosome, you kind of have a receptor, kind of an antenna there, that is where the chaperone docks and pass the protein inside. So that particular antenna that is called LAM2A um, is what decreases with age. So what we have found is that as you get old, normally, you know, like any other component inside the cell, you have to renew also your lysosomes. And this particular protein is normally renewed in a young person every three days. So every three days you have a new LAM2A and a new lysosome uh, working. What happened in aging is that this protein is lost in 10 hours. So the rest of the time until you have the new wave of receptor, you're not gonna have this receptor. You're not gonna have this antenna. And we are still interested right now in trying to understand why that protein cannot stay in the lysosomes and be functional longer when mm. you get old. And so far, it seems like it's really related with the lipid composition of this membrane. And we got into that and the first hint is because we realized that as I mentioned, the levels of this receptor decrease with age. And when I gave talks, you can see the young people saying, ah, I have plenty of time, right? I'm very young. But what I showed them is that if you put a mouse in a McDonald's diet, like high fat diet, mm -hmm. this young mouse in three months become as bad as a very, very old mouse regarding autophagy. So basically, nutrition and the, the amount of lipids that you have, the amount of sugars are going to modify your lysosomal environment. So your receptor that was supposed to last for three days, now it only lasts for like 10 hours because it's not in the right lysosomal environment. And so far we think that the membrane composition is a big player on that.